Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at blood vessels and we're going to look at the structure of arteries, veins and capillaries and then we're going to compare the three main blood vessels using the table at the bottom. So let's look at this image we've got at the top. Now it's a very simplified diagram but it's just to show the connection between these three blood vessels. Now we should say these blood vessels are described as tubular-like organs and with the heart they form what's called the circulatory system. So let's imagine the heart is pumping oxygenated blood out from the left side, so blood from the left ventricle passing out the aorta, it passes out in an artery. So let's just circle artery here at the top. Arteries carry blood away from the heart as it says at the top of the image just above where I've circled artery, so it says from the heart. So we're talking about blood coming from the aorta, the biggest artery in the body. Now arteries typically carry oxygenated blood except the pulmonary artery which goes to the lungs and that carries deoxygenated blood. Now when you compare in exam questions arteries and veins I would personally avoid talking about oxygenated and deoxygenated blood because of that particular one difference about the pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein. The, the true fact just today is that arteries carry blood away from the heart and veins carry blood back to the heart. So let's say we've got this artery carrying blood from the heart, so it's going to go away from the heart, and it's going to carry blood with oxygen in this instance, in this part of the diagram, to respiring cells, cells that ultimately need that oxygen. So blood is going to move down, you can see where we've got this arrow, so it's going to move down in arteries. Now it has in this diagram just artery leading straight to a network of capillaries and then a vein. Clearly there's a denser network of blood vessels in the body but like I said it's a sim simplified diagram of what really happens. But ultimately we've got the artery carrying blood away from the heart and we can see that it then branches into what are called arterioles. So we've got this word here. Now we're just going to describe what arterioles are because we said this is really about artery vein and capillary, the three main blood vessels, but let's just put in place what these arterioles are. These are small vessels that connect arteries to capillaries. So small vessels connecting an artery To a capillary. Now for some examples they're not an on spec piece of information but I've just included them there just so that you're aware of what we're referring to. So the artery narrows essentially into what's called an arteriole, a smaller vessel connecting an artery to a capillary and then we get to the capillary just here. Now you can see I've included the size if we look at this part where it says five micrometers. I mean five micrometers is incredibly small. Even though the diagram doesn't necessarily suggest that, capillaries are very, very small blood vessels indeed. Notably smaller than arteries and veins. Very, very small diameter. In fact, they're only one cell thin. These endothelial cells that make up capillaries create a lining that's only one cell thin. Now you can see in this portion of the diagram here that I highlight green, that these capillaries form a sort of network of blood vessels. And it's here where you have, if we just highlight on the diagram, where you have oxygen and nutrients, such as glucose, food, coming out of the capillaries to the tissues, so supplying tissues with oxygen and glucose for respiration, and waste products like carbon dioxide, for example, that have been made in respiring cells of the tissues, pass into the blood system via the capillaries, we're looking at this particular arrow here, you can see. And then that blood that is now classed as deoxygenated, so without oxygen, now has to return to the heart to be pumped up to the lungs to pick up more oxygen, and that happens in the veins. So we can see if we follow this diagram round, we've had the artery from the heart delivering blood to the capillary, where we get this gas exchange. So waste products like CO2 and oxygen moving into the tissues. So we've got gas exchange in the capillaries, but also just generally just exchange of materials happening in the capillaries. 
then this blood will travel up here. You can see ultimately up the vein and you can see at the top where I put an asterisk it says to the heart. Veins go back to the heart. But we can see there's another word before we reach the vein and that's the venule. So let's put the venule in place. Venules are, as you can guess, small vessels connecting capillaries to veins. So just like we had with the arterioles, these are small vessels and they connect capillaries to vein, so a capillary to a vein. So there's our venule. Now there is one uh, extra sort of link if you like or part to this diagram that I could add and again it depends on the specification whether this is required but there is a connection from here that goes all the way across to the vein. So we're going to draw in another little tube almost and that tube, in fact if we give that tube a colour, so if we colour it say brown in this instance Quite a nice thick brown tube there. Now this tube ultimately that I've just drawn in place, that is what's known as a shunt or a shunt vessel. Now shunt vessels link an artery directly to a vein and what it does allows is that it allows blood to bypass the capillaries ultimately. Now in certain areas that's crucial because what it does is control the blood flow. So these are small vessels called shunt vessels that link an artery directly to a vein, allowing blood to bypass capillaries in certain areas, and they control blood flow. And they control blood flow by what's called constriction and dilation. So when that shunt vessel constricts and it narrows, the blood would flow normally from the artery to capillaries and then back to the heart through veins. If that dilates and widens, then blood is able to go directly from the artery. If we draw this in yellow, so you can imagine it would go from the artery and then it would pass down this shunt vessel, completely bypassing the capillaries and head back to the heart in the vein. So there we've got a little bit of information about this diagram that you can see, and there's just two other particular things I'd like to highlight. I want to look at the tunica media, so the line with smooth muscle. Now if I colour this in, so if I look at the artery and colour this layer in red here, I'm referring to this muscle layer here, almost like the second layer in. I'm just doing a very rough shading, I know it's not the neatest but I just want to highlight a very crucial point. So there's the artery in a line, the tunica media. So what I've coloured in is this one. Now if I were to colour the same portion but in the vein, you'll notice straight away that it's a much, much thinner circle of muscle that I'm colouring in. See it's not particularly the neatest but ultimately you can see that it's much much thicker in the artery. So that's one of the key differences first of all between the arteries and the veins. There's a much thicker muscle layer in the artery than there is in the vein. My apologies with the stylus and I'm colouring in certain things on these diagrams is a little bit more fiddly, especially as I've just coloured in some of the inner lining. But you can get the overall gist that the artery has a thicker muscle lining, and we'll talk about the relevance of that in just a moment. Notice as well the size of the lumen. Now, lumen is a biological term for essentially sort of the hole, the inner hole, and arteries are much narrower than veins. Capillaries actually have the narrowest, even though the diagram is not to scale. So when we think of lumen, if I just or a hashed black area, we're talking about this portion here. The hole, if you like, and the artery you can see is a considerably narrower lumen than the vein. Even though it's not so obvious, the capillary lumen, just 
there is actually much, much narrower. So let us consider now the table at the bottom. Let's look at a true comparison of these blood vessels. Now as I said, it's quite detailed, so I'll write in certain bits of information in the table and then I will say extra bits of information that I think is relevant. So let's first of all assess direction of blood flow. So direction blood is carried. The arteries carry blood away from the heart. So I'm not going to write in from the heart, but ultimately away, because it has it at the top of the diagram. Whereas veins carry blood from tissues to the heart. So there's a key difference. Arteries carry blood away from the heart to the tissues, and the veins carry blood from the tissues to the heart. Now at the capillary, we don't have blood going to and from the heart. What we have is an exchange of waste, oxygen and nutrients occurring between blood and the tissues. So instead what we have is, I'll write this off, exchange of materials. So that's what we have at the capillary. So the capillary, we're getting an exchange of waste, oxygen and nutrients occurring between the blood and tissues. Artery away, veins carry blood too. Let's think of the pressure. So I'm going to just change the colour for each one of these just to make it a little bit more uh, visual. So pressure that the blood is under. From an artery, because it's coming directly from the heart, you can imagine that's very high pressure. The vein carries blood very low. Now, in a capillary, to be able to get adequate exchange of nutrients and oxygen and waste, the blood would need to be under not only a very low speed, but a very low pressure. And you can achieve this by having, as you can see, this very dense network of capillaries in the picture. So even though these vessels, these capillaries are very, very thin and very narrow diameter, by having such a dense network, it allows the blood to slow down and you get a very low blood pressure in the capillaries. Let's think about the thickness of the walls now. Now the artery is, imagine, as I've described, is particularly thick, in fact very thick, and that's to withstand the high pressure of the blood. The elastic walls actually expand and relax as blood is forced out of the heart. That's actually causing the pulse that you can feel if the vessel is pressed against the bone. Now rings of muscle can widen or narrow the artery to control the flow. So I circled in red on the artery, a big ring of muscle, and that muscle can, as I'm saying, can widen or narrow that artery to help control the flow of the blood. Vein, it's much thinner. So we've got a thick or very thick wall for the artery. The vein is much, much thinner. It's a much larger diameter and that's to help blood flow more easily. Nearby muscles can actually help squeeze these vessels and help blood get pushed back to the heart easier. And capillaries have a very thin wall, as we've alluded to already. Only one cell thin endothelial lining of cells. And that's to allow for a rapid diffusion of molecules across the membrane. Let's look at the size of the lumen now. Now that was something that we've we highlighted. This is kind of the hole within the tube. Now, the size of the lumen for the artery is very narrow, and a narrow lumen helps to maintain a very high blood pressure. So we can write in here, the size of the lumen for an artery is narrow. For a vein, we have a large lumen, and that's to help reduce resistance to blood flow. Capillary, however, to allow the blood, flowing, the blood to flow more slowly would be very narrow. So despite it being very narrow, it actually allows blood to flow much more slowly. Presence of valves, and this is an interesting one because in the heart we look at the AV valves, bicuspid and tricuspid, semilunar valves, but we need to consider valves within these main blood vessels also. Now there are no valves in the artery, none, and no valves equally in the capillary. But there are valves in the veins, what are called pocket watch valves, and they prevent the backflow of blood. If you think the blood is already at low pressure, so 
we're going to put yes here. They're called pocket watch valves and they help prevent the backflow of blood. Permeability. Now permeability refers to the ability of something to allow things to flow through it. If it's permeable, things can flow easily through it. That's why we refer to membranes, for example, as being semi, or well, not necessarily semi, because semi implies half, but partially permeable, allowing certain things to flow through and certain things not to. Now, the artery is not permeable, and equally the vein is not permeable. But to get exchange at the capillaries, they must be permeable. So there are small pores between the endothelial cells to allow exchange of materials. So if we look at this top picture here, we're talking, if I just draw a little line there, we've got pores here, we'd have a pore here. So pores at the junction between these endothelial cells allow for this permeability, these, this, ex, this sort of gap between these cells allowing for the exchange of material. So in terms of permeability, the capillary, we're going to put pores because we have the presence of these pores that allow it to be permeable. The speed of blood movement. Now, for the artery, if you see that we've referred to the pressure that the blood is under as being very high, you can imagine it's moving much, much quicker. So in arteries, the blood movement is very fast, slower in capillaries, and very slow, apologies, slower in veins and very slow in the capillary. Volume of blood carried. So, as an artery, even though it has a narrow lumen, it's able to maintain a very high blood pressure, ultimately aimed or helped by that thick muscle wall and that thick muscle lining. So the volume an artery or volume of blood that an artery can carry is fairly large. So we can write that in just here. So the volume of blood carried for an artery is very large. For a vein, it's very large. Helped again by the fact we have a large lumen. For a capillary, it's quite small. As you can see, it has a very small diameter. And let's think about the content finally of blood. So the artery carries blood typically rich in oxygen and low in CO2, except the pulmonary artery. So that's really key to say. So the artery typically carries blood that's rich in oxygen and low in CO2. But I'll put an asterisk to remember that the pulmonary artery does not apply to that. The pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood back to the lungs from the heart. But typically the other arteries carry blood that is high in CO2, low in, or high in oxygen, sorry, and low in CO2. It's the reverse in veins, they carry blood that is low in oxygen and much higher in CO2. We'll put an asterisk again because that doesn't apply to the pulmonary vein. But if you look at the diagram at the top where we've got low in oxygen and high in CO2, that would make sense because we've delivered oxygen from the capillaries to the tissues, we've picked up some waste and we're returning that blood via veins to the heart. So it would make sense that we've got low, low oxygen and higher CO2 for a vein. And for a capillary, what we see is the oxygen level falling because in the capillary we're losing that oxygen from the blood to the tissues and our CO2 level is rising because waste is coming into the capillary, into the blood within the capillary to be delivered back to the heart. So we'll use a double arrow here. So we've got an increase this time, or an increasing amount of CO2, and a falling amount, a falling concentration of O2. So there we have a comparison of the three types of blood vessels that we need to look at, the artery, vein, and capillary. We've talked about the structure using the diagram at the top. We've defined arteriole and venule, and a shunt vessel. We've explained about uh, how they work designed to bypass the capillary network and then using the table at the bottom we've taken a variety of factors to compare the artery vein and capillary in terms of direction of blood flow the pressure thickness of the wall and all of that information for IGCC is on spec information okay hope all that helps